So now we come to the main topic, building integrated PV. So that's a special segment. It's currently a niche. And I'll show you what this meant. This is building integrated PV. <laughs> that is uh, the Sanyo Solar Arc built in 2002. 2002, yes. It, um, was, uh, it should celebrate 50 years of Sanyo's existence. And um, it has a square of about 7,500 square meter, an area, sorry. And uh, the total capacity is about 630 kilowatt. It was meant to reach one megawatt, but they had a problem in that year with some flaws in their modules. So they didn't put the new modules on it, but used the ones which had some flaws or what was left over <laughs> to build it and finish it. <laughs> Inside is a big museum. It's an interactive museum. You can go there and learn uh, whatever you want to know on PV. So it's a very nice structure. So. So, it's starting to grow. It is there. You see it, and I will show you more picture. Um, you need to understand one key characteristic. BIPV all, always means that the, the solar or the PV part serves a second uh, purpose. It is not, like I showed you in this one, this, the sole purpose is put there, sit there, and generate electricity with as little maintenance as possible. In this case, it needs, it's a facade. So there's a building behind it. So it needs to work. I'll go more in detail. So please always remember, BIPV products serve a secondary architectural purpose. Tiles, windows, not only producing power. So this has several challenges. Um, one is clearly the safety aspect. For example, if you have, yeah, let's just click, go back to that picture. Assume one of these modules breaks and it falls down in large pieces. People walking down here will be killed or heavily injured. So it needs to be effectively integrated in, um, without deterioration of the properties of the wall, the windows, the roofs. It should better improve whatever this um, building element is doing. It needs to have reached the same durability and reliability and in this integrated solution. You know, a classical roof is easily lasting 30 years. So today, the guarantees we'll get for this module is 20, 25 years. So which means if you build a rooftop like here with modules, they have a shorter guarantee than a normal roof. So you have to keep that in mind. Typically, there's nothing's happened, but you don't know yet. So um, cost versus economic benefit. Given the fact that you combine, a, in this case, a roof element with energy generation, the typical the solution is more expensive then you would put normal shingles on the roof, clear, right? Because you put a module on the roof. Now you get a benefit for it, you harvest electricity. So now you have to, to check, and I will talk a little bit more on, on, on this economics part. So, and then you have an optical effect, because people looking at it, and the, the general phrase earlier was, architects just don't like standard modules, panels on the house. My, one of my brother is an architect. They look so ugly, you know, they mounted always on those roofs. <laughs> so that's why I put, oh, Natalia put out a couple of nice pictures. We found I like this roof. It's an integrated roof. So the panels are the roof. And I think it's clearly that you understand these roofs need to be airtight, watertight. They need to stay there in storm, not fly away. And uh, yeah, and last for 30 years. Well, this one is a nice uh, glass, it's a facade uh, made out of glass, glass modules. And uh, the solar cells are laminated inside of the glass. So I assume there's even a building behind, it's not only a, a fixture with some windows which can open. So they are also some, some form of semi-transparent because you see light even behind them. Um, so they serve multiple functions, energy, window, um, yeah, shading, whatever. Again, a little bit different roof than this one. And here you have a carport where you clearly see these modules are semi-transparent. So the cells are uh, not moved tight next to, next to one. So with this one, making a nice big large surface using every square centimeter to generate electricity. They are making a compromise so light comes through. So there's a little bit of light down here. Down here. So you don't have to put electric lightning in there, but still there is enough area exposed to generate electricity. So please, this is important. This is also this is now the detail of the special characteristic of the PV modules. So now the author of this paper, which we found in the internet, is uh, talking, about showing it more in a picture way. So uh, let me take you to the picture right away. So uh, this is the inside. 
the room typically. This is the wall. This is some thermal insulation. And now for simplicity, he put kind of an empty space, which sometimes has a use, sometimes not. And then the solar panel on the front side. So weather we already discussed. Clearly, you don't want to have water coming into the wall or, or, or snow through wind getting into that. Aesthetic, I mentioned. You know, if it looks ugly, nobody's going to buy it. And uh, noise. This is very tricky. Um, uh, let, let me ask that question to you. So uh, assume you wanna, your job is to, have, to build new windows for the university. And now here it's pretty quiet, but let's assume you want to build the next university on um, Lesi, Ukraina. Okay, so a road with heavy traffic. And so the standard window you can buy is a double pane window. Now your job is to improve the noise protection. What are you going to do? If we'll add the, another player, the area stays the same, the resonance frequency will be the same, so probably this won't work. It, it has to do with this. Because in a car, for example, what we do, we apply like material with lower... We, we, for example, we have an area of 5 square meters. Yes. We apply a piece of material in the center, which helps us to reduce this, uh, the, vibra the wavelength of, of a sound, yes. to transfer it to another... What, what you do is, you make a mismatch of impedances. That's what we probably do. Yeah. That's the, the technical stuff. Or in the window case, you make two panel panes, but one is thicker than the others. Mm. So you don't have to do triple pane. Triple pane is fine for thermal insulation, but not for noise. Mm. So if you want, you have to understand what you want to optimize. They are both expensive, but the cheaper solution is a, is a thick pane, pane and a thinner one. I bought triple panes because one side of my former house was wow. directly to a highway. Wow. And I said, great, let's add more pane. And it's yeah. happy, so I got thermal insulation yeah. and better thing. And then when I had it, the noise was, uh, abatement was bad. So, and then they told me, guys, you screwed up. So then I put another window inside of the window. So I had, at the end, five panes. And this did it. So you have, because we had completely different impotence. And that's exactly also what you do in, 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 uh, in, in concert halls. You have to do that. There, there is wall and then there is some uh, noise absorption material or reflex. So you play, but you have to design this. Acoustic uh, is a very complex material. It's not easy. Not just adding something is, is not, that's why it's good that they mention it. If you just would have a normal wall and you just put a solar panel in front of it, you might change your characteristic and actually uh, make it bad. If you do it right, you can get up to 25 decibel more, which is very significant. So that's why you have to design each system properly. Shielding, as it's, there's quite some uh, wires and solar panel, it acts actually as a Faraday's cage. So you can make use of that one. And the counterbalance is uh, where it is it, over here. You can also integrate an antenna on it. So if you want to do that, you can do this. Um, insulation, yeah, that's not thermal insulation. Day-night lightning, you can make it semi-transparent. So you can play with direct sunlight. You want to cut this in order to get some shadowing. But in diffuse light, for example, at night, or, or, or as it's cloudy, you get lots of light, more light in there. So this can be played properly if you want. Safety. You know, we don't want to have a, a kind of a semi-transparent glass glass module and everybody just kicks in with his feet and moves into your house. Uh, normally, a good glass glass panel it will have a hard time smash it with a hammer even. So, shading, same structure like here, a little bit different. Heat climatic, so for example, that's why they put this space in here. They have an opening here and then they get some air flowing in and they get warm, uh, they get it warm and get warm air in, which also cools the backside of the module which helps to uh, increase the harvest because the solar modules work best, the cooler they are. So antenna I already mentioned, electricity is trivial. That's what they, why you think of putting solar panels on a house. Um, and they even came up with some interesting idea which I don't fully understand. They said even for heating. So, and they make it at night or in winter. Now what I think is you, might have, you have fogging in winter of a window and you can do a little bit of heating with it using the solar panel and then you have a clear view to the outside. So that's what you do, for example, in, um, in uh, ships. They have over this round window where there is a bosun element which was cleans it as well as there's a heater in there. In most cases, or your, your, rear, your car windows also have heaters on the rear side. So the message you should take out of this is that you need, when you want to think of putting uh, PV into a house or on a roof, you need to understand what are you optimizing? What are your key parameters? Are you going 
for you, this is a must. Weather is a must, but here you can say, I'm not care about noise, I want to have a max, a much electricity, this is a no-brainer. This one you have to watch out, and then you optimize the system for that. And as I already have seen with the semi-transparent modules, and I'll show you some more examples, then there will be special products for this purpose. Not each system works for each purpose, and that's why BIPV still is more expensive than uh, a standard PV installation like over here, or on a standard rooftop where you have a fixed mounting system. Okay? So now, what is available today? So you have so-called in-roof system. Again, the standard, this one you can mount on top of a roof. So that's, there is a whole system uh, installation world available, but these are more, a bit more tricky, but they are existing now. You can buy them. I have seen, so, shown you some pictures in the beginning. Semi-transparent, typical glass glass modules. They are used for semi-transparent facades, skylights, shading system, also available. Then there is cladding system where you, this is the module, actually a part of the module, and this shows how it's mounted to a wall. Um, then you have solar shingle. So the, sh the shingle is a solar panel, but it acts also as a shingle. Watertight, airtight, stays, uh, withstands storms. Uh, it's hard to see, this is a, 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 a wave shingle and this is a flat shingle. Or you can have flexible laminates where you can make all types of, of forms with, uh, there are um, thin film modules available, not, not on silicon, but on this also, these are all thin film, um, which uh, you can put either on a plastic or on a st stainless steel foil, and then they build tents with it. And uh, the, the tent is a, a solar insulation, as well as a tent. So there is quite some uh, systems available and the number is growing. Now, I mentioned, let me go back, I mentioned the glass glass module over here. Uh, such a module with 60 cells has a weight of 21 kilogram. A glass glass module has, this is a one, the front side is glass, the back side is a Teflon based sheet, plastic sheet. The um, a glass glass module, a typical glass glass module has four, two glass panels, one on the front and one on the back side, both typically four, 3.2 millimeters and the weight goes up to 35 sometimes even 40 kilograms, so these are very <coughs> heavy, which also poses a problem and a challenge on this mounting or on this mounting. Now, people had been working on so-called class glass module with reduced weight, two millimeter classes, so the weight of these modules have now come down to 24, 23, 25 kilograms, meaning close to the standard module of 21. And I'm very happy to present to you an installation which we developed at our small joint venture in, uh, in Austria, it's called Das Energy. So this is a hangar, it's actually an airplane hangar, because our partner is an airplane uh, manufacturer, uh, Diamond Aircraft Industries, and we used one of their hangars now to put our pilot line for production of these modules, and we installed a test installation. Uh, this was done a week or one and a half week ago with this module on the outside. These are lightweight, and I'll talk more on this one in a minute. So all of these type of um, modules are now coming available, adding to the product uh, portfolio or the, for the building PIPV, and now we hope that this will also help the growth of that industry.